What's up, folks? This is Gray here, and welcome to the Sunday Shift Report. Uh, the crap has hit the fan. All in all, uh, we have several topics to discuss this uh, afternoon, and I want to say thank you all for joining me uh, on this premiere. Uh, first of all, I do want to say one thing. Uh, we've had some explosive growth over the weekend. I think we have over 100 to 125 new subscribers. Uh, so welcome uh, to the channel. I appreciate you guys uh, you know, uh, being part of this community. Uh, today's the day, basically, that I go over current events, uh, be it political or whatever else is in the media uh, that's happening uh, in the world today. Be it here in the U.S. or abroad, uh, we kind of go over several different topics and whatnot. And like I, I always tell everybody, this is from my perspective and my perspective only, so all opinions in this video are my own, uh, but I like to share them with you uh, just because we're, a lot of us are like-minded folks uh, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, if you guys do get any value out of some of this information here, I do appreciate if you hit that thumbs up button. Um, it does help the channel out. So, wow, I guess, uh, this morning we had quite the incident, correct? Uh, you know, some gentleman decided to, uh, you know, ram his vehicle into a, uh, barricade at the, uh, Capitol building, uh, which was engulfed in flames. I don't know if he set the fire himself. I guess reports are still coming out in regards to that information. Uh, fired a few rounds into the air and then, uh, you know, uh, passed through self-infliction uh, to himself uh, by the time the Capitol Police and others got there. And the question I have for you, the viewers, is, is, this, uh, is, this, the, is this what's to come? Are we going to see more and more and more of these things uh, evolve into what they are? Are they going to be more dramatic? Uh, you know, there's a lot of folks out there uh, that are just feeling not happy with what's going on in the world, and uh, specifically here in the U.S. Uh, and there's some, unfortunately, there's people out there that are, as they call them, extremists. Uh, and what I mean by extremists is people that uh, take things a little bit far. So what I mean by that, and, uh, you know, this is, you know, open to interpretation as most things are. We can always agree to disagree. Uh, but folks out there, I don't know if you guys remember, some of you folks may be uh, familiar with the whole Timothy McVeigh uh, issues and stuff like that, and people uh, like himself that were associated with that event. Uh, you have folks like the Unabomber and uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, people out there that do some in, uh, crazy things out there in the world. And so that's my question is, do you folks think that you're going to see more of this? Um, I know there was also a uh, gentleman uh, that tried to, I guess, was firing at a, an FBI local officer or whatnot like that. Um, I don't know. Is uh it's quite intriguing to see how things are unfolding and the way certain people are taking uh, things into context and, and uh, I guess, acting upon uh, their thoughts and uh, what they perceive to be the right thing to do. Anyways, uh, I do have that article. Uh, <laughs> I guess I've said anyways a bunch of times, but anyways, <laughs> you know, oh, it's just the things that I say sometimes that I catch myself saying. Uh, that somebody will complain about down the road or in the comments. Uh, it's always entertaining uh, to read those type of things. Moving on, uh, here's the article here on the screen uh, that we're talking about. It says, armed man rams burning car into barricade near U.S. Capitol. Uh, shoots himself uh, per the Capitol Police. It says, a man on Sunday morning crashed his car into a barricade near the U.S. Capitol in Washington before, the, before shooting and killing himself according to the Capitol Police. I guess I shouldn't read the headline. I should just go into the article, right? Anyways, the man rammed his car into the barricade East uh, Capitol Street and 2nd Street between the Supreme Court and the Li Library of Congress just after 4 a.m. Uh, this morning. His vehicle became engulfed in flames and he was getting out of it. The man then fired several shots into the air uh, when police officers heard the gunfire and started approaching. The man uh, had shot himself. Police reported no other injuries. No, officer, no officers were appeared to have fired their weapons, nor did it appear that any members of Congress was a target, according to the police. Both chambers are on recess and are not scheduled to return till mid-September. They're on their vacation, you know, their taxpayer-funded vacation is what the, where they're on. Anyways, quite intriguing. Uh, when I read that this morning, I was like, huh, I want to talk about that. Because we're seeing more and more things evolve into... Uh, I guess, more drastic measures that people feel they need to take to make a point or make their opinion. And I'm not condoning that by any manner. I'm not, I never condone anything that some people do. Uh, it's their choice. And, you know, I guess that's what that gentleman wanted to do. I don't understand what he was trying to say. Uh, no one, I guess, maybe they'll find some information on his computer uh, and all this stuff like that, why he did what he did. Maybe he has some sort of crazy manifesto. Who knows? 
Uh, and it's just hard to digest it. And you can see the sarcasm in my voice and the way I'm looking is because uh, every time something happens, uh, you know, down the road, they'll, they'll, they'll release information in regards to this gentleman's past, his history, his social media, and all that stuff like that. And some of it's hard to believe. You know what I mean? It's hard to digest and think, okay, really? Uh, and no one caught this and no one had any inclination of this gentleman's uh, mindset uh, or what he was planning or why he planned what he planned to do. I don't know. Those are just some of the questions that I beg to uh, ask myself and uh, ask others uh, like yourself uh, in chat, as well as people that I come in contact with and have conversations with. Another crazy situation. Uh, you know, we've been having this situation at our southern border for quite some time. Ever since Corn Pop took his uh, took power uh, here in the United States, uh, the southern border has been wide open. Uh, basically, I've talked to uh, several people and also listened to news uh, agencies uh, talk to people in Texas and Arizona and places like it that kind of go around the border. Even in California, in the, in the southern parts of California, people are speaking out and saying they, they, they're almost scared to leave their house due to uh, cartel activity, uh, human trafficking, uh, drugs, and, and all the things that are associated with that uh, mass influx of migrants coming across the border unchecked. And what I mean by unchecked is there's uh, some of them, some of them will get caught, some of them will get processed. Uh, and as you see, uh, <laughs> what happens in that process where they kind of just, you know, hey, just show up to this court date whenever you can. And most of them don't, most of them don't. And ironically, most legal people, most legal immigrants, people that want to come to America to create a better life for themselves, uh, they will uh, do it legally and go through the process. And it could be a lengthy process, but it kind of vets them and kind of they want to people, you know, most governments want to know why do you want to come to our country uh, and willing, what are you willing to bring uh, to the table kind of thing like that. You know what I mean? Uh, and there's other things like political asylum and stuff like that for other folks, but quite intriguing. Anyways, uh, let me bring this up for the folks that may not be aware of this. Uh, this was a warning put out uh, by a specific cartel. Uh, it's the... I think what it says here is that I'm going to probably mispronounce it, but Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or the CJNG, sent a warning threatening mass violence against anyone roaming the streets this weekend in cities throughout northern Baja, California. So you have a cartel threatening U.S. citizens. When do you think uh, <laughs> the folks in Washington are going to take this serious? You know, that that's that's my question to those folks is when are they going to take the southern border seriously and see what's transpiring because now we have a cartel threatening u.s citizens anyways the message in spanish read uh be warned as friday at 10 p.m through sunday at 3 a.m we're going to create mayhem uh so the expletive government frees our people we the jalisco new generation cartel we don't want to hurt good people as they say but it's the best they don't go outside we're going to attack anyone we see on the streets uh on these days U.S. government employees have been instructed to shelter in place until further notice, the consulate said. That was over there in, I think, Tijuana, uh, from my understanding. Uh, a second notice sent out via social media said people should avoid the area. Seek secure shelter if in the area. Monitor, monitor local media for updates. Be aware of your surroundings and notify friends and family of your safety. Uh, because people who have uh, folks that are right across the border or in Baja, California, specifically, are probably worried, scared, and uh, a little bit probably agitated with uh, our federal government not protecting them. Uh, basically, if you talk to folks at the border, uh, and I mean beyond just uh, the citizens of those states, I mean like the Border Patrol itself and ICE and several other agencies, uh, they'll tell you basically that uh, it's, it's kind of a catch and release program uh, that they have there and uh, their hands are tied by the current administration. Uh, as the influx of drugs kind of uh, flow over the border freely, uh, as well as, you know, all types of different uh, trafficking in regards to, uh, you know, people being kidnapped uh, and using for, you know, nefarious purposes. Uh, but something to be aware of if you live in that area, you know what I mean? Uh, at least that's how I feel about it, you know what I mean? I can only imagine if I had someone that lived in Baja, uh, I would hope. And, and see, the thing is, is California has some of the strictest gun laws on the books. So how do some of those folks protect themselves, uh, being that they're, uh, they're, they're restrained from the act of protecting them oneself uh, is something that was to erupt in their area or in their neighborhood. This is why we believe so whole, wholeheartedly into the Second Amendment uh, and why it means so much to a lot of folks like myself and others. 
Uh, so I wanted to add to that in regards to uh, Doug Ducey, the Arizona governor. Uh, here's an article, and I had I do have some of these articles linked down below uh, in case you guys want to read them in their entirety and draw your own conclusions. Uh, it's one thing that I would suggest to you, my viewers, is uh, just because I say stuff here on YouTube uh, and give my opinion doesn't mean I'm right. Uh, this is just the way I read into it and my perspective and uh, and decide the way, the way I want to share this information. So I always employ most of you folks out there to take your time. Uh, and if the articles are linked below, uh, which I try to do most of them, uh, is to kind of further research it and look into it and draw your own conclusion outside of my own. Anyways, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey has ordered 60 double-sided stacked shipping containers to be placed in border fence gaps near Yuma, the state's busiest illegal border crossing. The containers will be reinforced with uh, Constantino wire and at, at the top, according to the governor, who issued an executive order for the work to begin on August 12th. Uh, Arizona has, en has had enough. Uh, and uh, Texas has had enough. Arizona's had enough. I think most states have had enough. If you look at uh, the way D.C. is begging the Pentagon for the National Guard to resolve the issues uh, in some of their areas as well as New York. Uh, but it's funny to see their expressions and their rhetoric that they're spreading about, you know, the governor of Texas and whatnot. Anyways, uh, th but they will refuse to go down and see the situation in Texas firsthand. Uh, there's been a lot of... Uh, political disinformation in regards to that. You know what I mean? People with their fake tears, uh, not even really paying attention to the issue at hand, uh, just using it for political fulfillment uh, for their uh, constituents, if they even have any at this point. Anyways, uh, it says, we can't wait any longer. The current administration's lack of urgency on border security is a dereliction of duty. Uh, for the last two years, Arizona has made every attempt to work with Washington to address the crisis on our border. Contractors started placing the shipping containers on August 12th and expect to complete the 1,000-foot gap in the border wall on August 14th. It's expected to cost $6 million. Uh, I'm assuming that the state's paying for it and the, uh, I, I mean, I guess the folks of Arizona probably would, wouldn't mind uh, paying, I guess, you know, because basically it comes from taxpayer dollars, from my understanding. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be federally funded or whatnot, which still comes from taxpayer dollars. States and uh, be it the state or the federal level, uh, basically most things are paid through us, we the people. Uh, without we the people and the work that we put in, uh, they would have no money. Anyways, the stack shipping containers will reach about 22 feet high and will be linked together and welded shut, Ducey said. The existing border wall constructed during the uh, number 45's era is 30 feet high. And, uh, you know, that's, I think that's why probably number 45 is so popular, because if you ask the folks in those areas, they'll tell you, uh, during his administration, they felt a lot safer uh, in the border regions down there and, uh, you know, Texas and Arizona and so on and so forth. But at this point, they're scared to leave their homes. They're scared to let their kids play outside, uh, their children to walk to school because of all the things that are happening due to us uh, not us, but specifically the federal government not protecting its citizens from an invasion from the southern border. I call it invasion as well as many others. Again, that's my my uh, opinion on that. Speaking of a few other things, uh, ironically, and, and this may mean nothing, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. Oh my God, it was Russians, uh, planes uh, in the sky near Alaska. World War III is coming. It's just not what I'm going to do. But in regards, I did. I thought it was an intriguing. I'll throw the article up uh, due to a NORAD uh, tweet as well as this uh, article. It says, Russian military aircraft flew into the area that's monitored by U.S. military officials in Alaska at least three times in recent days. The North American Aerospace uh, Defense Command, a.k.a. NORAD, confirmed this week. NORAD's Alaska Division detected and tracked and uh, identified Russian surveillance aircraft entering and operating within Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone, according to a Twitter statement from the military agency. It occurred on three separate occasions in the past week, said NORAD on Thursday. The Russian aircraft did not did not enter American or Canadian sovereign airspace, uh, NORAD officials said in a Twitter post. And you can see there's the Twitter as well. Or if you happen to follow NORAD on Twitter, uh, if you engage uh, in that content. But I thought it was intriguing because, uh, you know, we make a big deal about it, or at least our government does, right? I'm assuming that we do it all the time to Russia and China and all the other communist nations out there. 
uh, we fly and we do a lot of uh, spying, right? That's just the way the game is played. Uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, I, I don't know Putin personally. <laughs> Wouldn't that be interesting, folks? Anyways, I don't know what his thought process is. I don't know what his end game is in regards to what he's doing. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they're trying to gather some sort of intel. Be it Alaska is the closest, I mean, pretty much the closest thing to Russian, uh, to, to Russia in itself. So, of course, they're going to do things like that. Uh, will it raise alarms? Yeah. Is it concerning? Possibly. Uh, but, you know, should you, uh, you know, jump into a bunker and hunker down for the next month? Probably not. That's just my perception. All right, moving on. This this one has, this article kind of has me perturbed, right? A lot of you folks out there are paying a lot more for energy costs this, uh, this year. Uh, some folks have written emails. Some people have dropped comments in regards they're paying, you know, double the amount for their energy cost. Even I'm here in Florida, we're paying at least 35 to 45% more for energy. Uh, it hasn't technically doubled for me since last year, but, but it has increased uh, at least, um, you know, about a little under 50% which is still a lot when it comes into the way inflation is uh, in our economy. And uh, most of us haven't gotten some sort of raise that's going to uh, you know, account for the increase in inflation and the cost of goods, right? Even though they say there's zero inflation, according to the, uh, the big chief out there in Washington, zero inflation in July. Uh, but, of course, they don't account for everything else. They, don't, uh, they look at one number, and they're basically saying, oh, you know, there was zero inflation. And I'm thinking to myself, that doesn't even make sense. You know, whoever, if, if it's not him, if it's someone writing this stuff, if it's scripted, it just blows my mind that they're willing. How many people out there really believe that? I mean, you folks, the American citizens go out to the grocery stores uh, all the time and you see uh, the cost of goods gone up. You know, you pay more for your eggs, your milk, uh, canned goods. You guys have seen shrinkflation. Uh, you know, you used to be a 24-ounce can of beans. Now it's, you know, an 18-ounce can of beans, uh, but for the same price or higher. So hopefully hopefully people will just start to wake up, man. Wake up and see that uh, this administration is truly lying to them. Uh, from the press secretary uh, to the big head honcho himself, uh, Corn Pop. So, you know, someone once said in my, in my, in my comment section, uh, you know, you look like an idiot. Uh, uh, referencing the president of the United States as corn pop. Well, I was like, you know what? Uh, personally, uh, I'm an American citizen, and I can pretty much damn near do whatever the hell I want to say or do uh, in a certain realm of uh, law, right? So you don't like what I have to say, don't watch my content. Uh, but anyways, I like how people just want to voice their opinion on the way I describe things or words I decide to use. But... uh <laughs> You know, those are the things that make me laugh. People think that they're harming me by saying something negative uh, in regards to uh, the way I speak, the, uh, the material that I present and stuff like that. And honestly, folks, I could care less. I could care less if someone likes me or doesn't like me. Uh, what I really care is that, you know, I'm sharing information that some folks find valuable to them. Uh, not everyone will ever agree with every single thing that I have to say. Uh, and I've had some great conversations with some people out there that uh, disagree with some of the things I say or even correct me when I make a wrong statement or say something wrong, which I don't mind at all. I think that's cool. Constructive criticism is one key aspect to uh, civilization and the way it is, you know, to accept that constructive criticism and move forward with it and say, OK, this is something that I can do better. But changing the way I speak or the way I say something specifically, like the way I like to designate corn pop uh, as number 46 that's my choice to do so, and I'm going to continue to do it, whether they like it or not. They don't have to watch this content. Uh, you know, folks, we, we, you know, us as content creators, we will lose subscribers, gain subscribers. It's just the way of the game. Uh, but uh, uh, I, matter of fact, I, I think I told you guys not too long ago that I had a conversation with someone before that she was like, hey, Gray, you know, I'm sorry I'm going to unsubscribe. Uh, but she was very polite in the way she said it. She just said, something, you know, we just have our political differences are too much. And uh, I was like, hey, that's OK. But my, my main issue to her or my main message to her was, look, when I do stuff like this and talk political or give my political opinion on things like that, don't watch that stuff. 
But if I'm showing you how to, let's say, start a fire without a, you know, a lighter, or if I'm showing you how to store food or dehydrate or garden, I said, maybe you should hang in there and watch that content because it might be beneficial to you. If not, there's a million other channels out there that you can, uh, I guess, frequent. It doesn't matter, but I just, you know, that's how I feel. You know what I mean? That there's still a message here to be perceived and to, uh, that could be helpful to the, to that person or others that may not like the way I feel politically, uh, cause the channel is more than just that. Sorry, I went down this tangent, but that's how I, you guys know I like to ramble. Uh, I get ostracized for that as well. Uh, but let's bring this up here. This is quite an intriguing article because again, back to the whole energy conversation that we were having, it says, uh, number 45, Eric Coley's program hits, uh, hit with a setback as Obama era freeze gets revived. Uh, so the federal government, of course, is doing all these issues with land leases in regards to oil and fracking and stuff like that. And we see the outcome of this higher fuel prices, uh, be it diesel, gas, natural gas, uh, and, and the list goes on, right? Anyway, so it says in a federal court, uh, a federal court has reimposed an Obama era freeze on coal leasing uh, from federal lands that former president, uh, I always say number 45, acts in his bid to unlock domestic energy production. I don't, I don't think you get in trouble for saying his name, but who knows, man? Uh, we're, we're being silenced in every possible way that you can think of. Anyways, through the judge, uh, the, uh, though the judge left the door open uh, to resuming the coal leases if more extensive environmental review was done. So what he's trying to say is that there wasn't enough in there to, uh, to provide new leases to, uh, for coal, um, for coal, for the coal lease program. Anyways, uh. In a ruling on August 12th, U.S. District Judge Brian Morris faulted the Trump era review of the coal leasing program for limiting the environmental impact review to just three issues, greenhouse gas emissions, socioeconomic impacts, and water quality. Um, and you saw how I kind of threw that in there. I don't know if you guys caught that. We'll see what happens. It says the court determines that such a limited analysis fails to consider all direct, indirect, uh, all direct or indirect and cumulative impacts of restarting the federal coal leasing program, Morris wrote in the ruling. Uh, matter of fact, I think I was talking to Billy over at Frontier Preppers, and he had said, or I don't know if I was talking to him or if he left me a comment or an email, uh, but he had said that, uh, I think he had said, I think it was from him, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, about uh, coal plants, or maybe it might have even been Rudy for all I know, uh, but someone out there had said that the uh, a lot of the coal plants are shut down. Uh, and the coal industry is being hit hard uh, by uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, per se, right? And we're going to talk about that here in just a second. But as you see, they're kind of dismantling all aspects of our independence for energy here in the United States, uh, which is truly concerning because we uh, are the ones that are going to have to deal with that. Do you think the people in Congress, the people up in the upper echelon things, they're worried about heating their homes or paying bills because, uh, you know, they're pushing all this, you know, energy, green energy stuff, and uh, it's going to restrict them? No, it affects us. Uh, you know, the, the poor, the middle class, uh, and those folks. And uh, it's truly quite concerning the direction they're going in. And if you look at other countries that are doing this too, uh, they're basically telling their people like, hey, uh, there's going to be uh, bouts of blackouts. Uh, you're going to be limited on what you can run. Uh, and, and just being governed in that aspect that uh, these people may suffer due to them pushing uh, this agenda. Anyways, Moving on, uh, speaking of the IRS, uh, I did touch on this, uh, was it Thursday, I think I might have touched on it. I, I want to bring this up here, uh, and you know, uh, I'll throw the article up before I get into it, but uh, everybody keeps on focusing on the number 87,000, right? Uh, as well as the, uh, you know, the, the the job posting that the IRS put out. Do you, when you look at this, you got to look at it more broadly, and what I mean by that is that's 87,000 new agents are have you thought about the support staff behind them so when you look at that number it's probably a lot more it's probably over a hundred thousand uh and who's paying for it we the people supercharged irs will collect 20 billion more from americans making less than four hundred thousand under the inflation reduction act so 20 billion more from americans making less than four hundred thousand dollars i don't know many americans that make over four hundred thousand dollars uh I don't. Uh, I don't make over four hundred thousand dollars. Far be it. I guess. Uh, I guess I'm in the wrong line of work per se. 
Anyways, this is uh, the Republicans in the House uh, Ways and Means Committee said they have received information from the nonpartisan scorekeeper at the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, challenging the Corn Pops administration narrative uh, that Americans making less than $4,000 a year won't see higher IRS audit rates. The remarks came in August 12th statement that was published as the Democratic-controlled House passed the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which includes nearly $46 billion in additional funding for IRS enforcement of the $80 billion or so total funding uh, boost uh, to the tax agency. So we, we, it's, it's ironic that we are paying for this through our tax dollars to be more scrutinized by a, a federal agency. My, how crazy things work. Anyways, folks, you know, they're probably, here's my assessment. They're going to come after folks in regards to like small businesses, mom and pops, uh, anything. And this is my opinion in the aspect of anybody who they want to go after, they're going to go after by building, you know, you know, it's funny when you look at the size of the Marine Corps, look at the size of the Marine Corps, right? I forget the exact number, the size of the Marine Corps, and look at the size now of the IRS agents. So they feel, and you don't have to take my word, you can look this information up, some of you folks may know this already, that, that, that it's more important to push money into policing Americans, to policing Americans, First, it is uh, to pour that money into our military to protect Americans. So they want to police Americans instead of protect Americans. It's insane when you look at the numbers. And that's what some people just don't do. Some people will just, oh, I'm going to cover my eyes uh, and just, you know, go to work and uh, live my life that way. If you look at the size of this agency now and what they're pushing, look at the size of just the Marine Corps. Look at the size of our military in general and add that to the size of the federal agencies that police American citizens. I'm telling you. The direction of everything that everything is going, or the direction of everything and the way it's moving into our country, we're looking more and more like China and Russia, Venezuela, uh, North Korea, and so on and so forth. It hasn't got there yet, but it's looking more and more like that. Every day as we get silenced, um, as we get investigated, uh, if they're willing to do something like what they did to a U.S. president, imagine what they're willing to do to you, just a simpleton citizen, living your life, trying to live the American dream. It's a warning to everyone out there, folks. It's scary. Scared to think that. <sighs> I thought I had something else here. Oh, and let, let's continue on this topic about this Inflation Reduction Act. Because I thought this article was interesting and I wanted to share it with you folks. So go ahead and uh, you can see it here now. Uh, this one is a little bit more harder to see. And sometimes I know you guys can't see it. And that's why I read the articles instead of just... Uh, but I like to bring up the article so that you know that I'm referencing material uh, out there that's free to the public to see. Uh, but sometimes people just want to hear me read this stuff. And I appreciate, you know, your guys' support uh, on content like this. Uh, should I say it again? Hit that thumbs up button. <laughs> Anyways, it says the, the Democrats Inflation Reduction Act will not reduce inflation. <sighs> Mind blown. As claimed, it might end up harming the American economy, as finance pro professors said in an interview with the NTD. They really didn't name the Inflation Reduction Act correctly. It should be exactly the opposite. Michael Butler from Stockton University said in an interview, the act will neither reduce the country's high inflation nor speed up the economic growth, he said. Go figure. No surprise there, folks. The economy has had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, which indicates a recession, even though they want to relabel what a recession technically is. And they want to push that onto the masses. Anyways, as such, the American economy is currently in stagflation. And you know, and it's funny, if, you, if you've listened to other content creators out there, people that, and what I mean by content creators is people that are actually knowledgeable in regards to this type of information. Uh, they've been saying this for over a year, that 
what we're going to be seeing is stagflation, a recession, high inflation, the cost of goods going up, stack it to the rafters. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of channels out there that just speak a lot of rhetoric uh, and are negative uh, and don't provide any quality to their viewers. Uh, but it is what it is, right? You choose to watch what you want to choose to watch. Uh, you're free to do so, right? Uh, it's your time, and what you do with it uh, is up to you. Anyways, uh, stagflation, which refers to a stagnant economy with inflation. The last time the United States was in stagflation was during the time of uh, Carter administration back in 1977 and 1981, Butler said. Been quite some time, folks. This is not like the, uh, you know, the housing uh uh, the housing crash. This is not like, uh, you know, the dot-com crash. It's, it's far, far worse. I hope a lot of you folks out there are paying attention and preparing to the best of your ability. Because if things get truly bad, uh, you may be dependent on the things that you've done uh, to prep for what's to come. You know, that's what we do here. You know, and that's what a lot of folks, a lot of you folks, uh, and myself included, that's why we our preppers. That's why we prep food and water and all the things that we do, uh, because something's always bound to happen. It's not if, it's the when. You know what I mean? Uh, and we've t I've said this many, many times. It could be the smallest thing, uh, from a flood to a lightning storm, to power outages to hurricanes and natural disasters, all the way to something insane like war or economic collapse, or EMP, CMEs, and all that stuff like that. It's it's an all encompassing thing. We prepare for every possible scenario that we can uh, for the protection of our family and our loved ones. And I employ everyone out there to do it and keep on doing it. You know, it can get a little troublesome at times. And what I mean by that is that it can be exhausting, uh, taxing on your mental health. Uh, I get it. I get it. And that's why I always say that phrase, you're not alone, because we're all in this together. At least most of us are. There's a small fringe group of folks that aren't a part of this. Uh, and uh, are leading f people down the wrong path. Uh, but, hey, people have free choice. I just hope that if things really truly go bad, truly, truly go bad, that you, my viewers, and everyone else there that reads, uh, that watches my content, as well as other uh, people out there that share this message, is that uh, you will be safe, or as safe as you possibly can be, especially you and your children. You know, it's it's funny when you look at certain things, and people don't, you know, they look at they look at us as okay. This is uh, this is gray man, or this is uh, you know uh, whoever else that you may watch, right? This is this person, but they don't ever think about behind the camera. And what I mean behind the camera, going beyond that, is you know my family, my children, you know my father, my loved ones that I'm trying to prepare for. Uh, just like you, you know, I I might I know I know some of you folks here in chat. You know, I'll be. You know, I like to shout you guys out. And uh, I know some of you. Uh, and uh, But, you know, there's more to you than just you. There's your son or daughter, your mother or your father. And that's why I'm so big on, you know, keeping the chat clean and productive. Also, family friendly because uh, we're here to share a message and communicate with one another. Uh, and uh, sharing ideas is what makes things better. Uh, you know, someone says, you know, let's say someone in chat saying, hey, I'm canning uh, so-and-so today. I'm canning some uh, bacon or whatever it may be. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just throwing it in something that popped in my head because I had bacon for breakfast this morning. Uh, and someone says, oh, I'm canning that too. Uh, how do you do it? And they have that small conversation either in chat or in the comment sections. And they learn from one another. I think that's truly awesome. I guess to me, that's the benefit of social media. There's always that negative side of social media. Uh, of people that are just unhappy with their lives, with themselves, uh, and preach hate. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, I know some of you folks aren't as religious. I, I mean, I'm not, the, I'm not the biggest religious person, um, but I do believe in God. And the only person that can truly judge you folks uh, is God. So don't ever let anybody get you down. Uh, People that, you know, take the time out of their day to, to judge other people and be extremely judgmental uh, in regards to a person uh, or their or anything like that of that nature. Uh, all you can do is pray for their souls uh, and hope that 
something uh maybe they'll get a something that'll happen in their life and, and change their mindset sorry again going down <laughs> random stuff like that but anyways folks that's going to go ahead and wrap up the sunday shift report uh we went about 35 minutes 36 minutes or so here uh but thank you all for joining me on this live stream i'm going to say thank you for all your support i really do appreciate every single one of you uh for being here and taking the time out of your day to hang out with myself and the great community uh and uh mods of course you guys you guys rock you guys uh are the backbone of the channel and i truly appreciate everything you guys do uh folks blessings to every single one of you out there you and your families and uh, i wish the best for every single one of you uh in your endeavors and uh moving forward uh with whatever happens into this uh our economy the world and america other than that folks you are not alone this is gray man i'm out i'll see you guys in a rebound god bless <laughs>